everyone, it's Lauren, your sewing buddy, and this is my friend Asher. Asher's participating in National Novel Writer Month, and he has fallen woefully behind. So today, while I'm talking to you about some more patterns, he's going to be catching up on his word count. Anything you'd like to say on the matter, Asher? I feel extremely guilty for falling behind, but I will catch up and I will win. And so you should. Yes, okay. So, y'all seem very into looking at my Simplicity pattern collection, so today I've got my McCall's for you, which again includes my patterns, my mom's patterns, probably some of my grandma's patterns, and uh, some patterns probably from Lena. Again, Lena, if you want them back, let me know. Um, so first I have 8450, which is a very hanky looking uh, Renaissance-esque pattern. So this one was from... Where's your copyright information on these? I don't know, but it's more modern so it doesn't really matter. This one I got it around the same time as the other one I made with my mom. Uh, this is Nicole's 8937. I know these ones aren't as interesting as the older ones. 1997, just like the other one that I made with her. I have McCall's 5818. This is various bathrobes. I know she used this to make bathrobes for my dad. And 1977. Not that bathrobe style really changes over the years much, but I guess it's a timeless pattern. Sort of a tunicky style vest. M5338, and I'm pretty sure this one was from Lena, uh, from 2007. Here's an old one, uh, 5115, you've got your variations of your wide leg pants, uh, crop tops, full tops, baby doll top, lots of cute things from 1976. I like that these ones have the dates written on them because a lot of the old simplicity ones do not. And that was, well, it was fun looking them up. Speaking of which, I did find out which one of those was the oldest in my entire collection. So if you can guess which one it is, I will give it to you. We can do a giveaway, I guess. Uh, it. I will warn you heads up, it is missing one piece, but it's an easy to redraft piece. Uh, this is McCall's 5675. Five. Some very cute shirts. Nice little ties up the neck from 1977. I'm wondering if these will get any older or maybe grandma didn't have any McCall's. Uh, 5273. Good pants pattern. Where is it date? 2006. This is a cute little, like, handkerchief skirt. It's like you could do a handkerchief or just a full circle skirt. From, oh, the number is 5110. And this one, as you know, is more modern, 2006. Here is an oldie, though. Men's work shirts. And my mom has a note on here, perfect fit for Larry Crawford, except he does not like tapered. Larry Crawford is my uncle. So maybe this one, oh, 1969, okay. Maybe mom was making shirts for dad, or maybe that's my grandma's writing. She would be more likely to, I don't know, they both have really similar handwriting. This one is a very cute 8192. Adorable little dresses. Do you even tell me your date? Or is this one of those I'll have to look up later? I might have to look this one up later. It's been taped shut again. Um, oh, maybe it hasn't even been used. That would be really exciting. Uh, but it's a girl's dress, size 7. And these adorable button front, the little collar... That might be one to open up and see. 
Okay, this is the one that um, was the flower girl dress for my aunt and uncle's wedding for me. And this was 1983. Um, but I know I would have been one there, but I was like three or four at the wedding. So uh, she was hanging on to this one for a while. Here's another copy of 8937. So one of these belongs to Lena. One of these is mine. Eight four four nine. Some very, again, um, almost cartoonish, very costumey Renaissance garb, but that would work for Renfair uh, from nineteen ninety six. Oh, this one is so cute. The corduroy seven nine seven nine three three uh, from nineteen sixty five. You can do a jumper. You can do a coat. And this cute little dress here. Makes me wish I had a little girl to dress up. Here's some ladies' pajamas uh, from 1993, uh, 6801. 7832 Mrs. Brunch Coat from 1965. So. This is what you wear for bottomless mimosas. I might need one. Oh, there's a very good cloak pattern. It has that nice sort of ruffled um, hood to it. That would be for, uh, I think that would be like a 1700 so that you had room for your insane hair. Uh, 4698 from 2004. It's so when McCall started doing the historical patterns for reels and not for costuming. They kind of did a very good job. Oh, here's a very cute little girl's dress. Look at that smocking. Buttons down the back. And this one was from sometime. 1949. So that is the oldest we've come across so far. Um, and it comes with smocking directions, or someone found smocking directions to photocopy. Um, but that's very cute. Ooh. This is a very cute one with the sort of bishop sleeve, um, nice fitted dress, longer skirt. 2599 from 1970. And someone did math on the back here. 48 divided by 3 is 40, no, 48 times 3 is 144. Uh, more for hostess skirt. So more than 1 and 7 eighths yard. And that was probably my grandma's writing. Ooh, a free pattern. Uh, B3 evening outfit went to my mom when she was living in Yorba Linda but what kind of date information do you give me probably none still that's a cute little set of three looks um, I like this little skirt suit here that's very cute Cute. You've got a little apron, you've got sort of a maxi dress overall type situation, or a sundress. Uh, this is another sample. So it's all about the free samples. Um, this one was 1975. Here's another more modern one, number 2211. Uh, it still has some of the drawings, but then you have the photo of the woman wearing it, which is how you can usually tell a more modern pattern. And, uh, yeah, 1999. Let's party. <laughs> <laughs> how many words you got? 
I am up to 2,302. And you need to be at 3,000? I need to be, today I need to be at 6,666. You're almost halfway there. Almost! Here is another very costumey renaissance sort of Henry the Eighth, I guess, um, from 2000. And there's a little piece of fabric fuzz. Here's a very cute one, nice flowy sleeves, mandarin collar. Um, still a v-neck though, so it's an interesting cut to a shirt. Uh, 4148 from... really? 2003. Seems like every year they change where they put the copyright information. This one is really cute, this asymmetrical sort of flowy top, uh, all these cowl necks here. Could be fun drapey fabric. Do a lined chiffon or something. 2004, which, you know, that was very much the style. Ooh, very roughly poetic sort of 70s feel, but from 2003. So I guess that was the kickback to the 70s. Uh, and this one is number 4147. My pile just fell over. This is another blouse, um, again with the flowy sleeves, but this one looks a little bit more like you could pick it up at Kmart maybe. Uh, 2003 again. Ooh, doublet pattern. This is a very good one because you have your peplum. Um, they want you to do frog closures and you can do different details with the sleeves. You can do the detachable sleeves or just no sleeves. Um, I'm sorry for that ding right there. Um, yeah, I don't think I've actually... No, I did make this one once for Jody. I did it with this uh, look here with a sort of cream and silver striped fabric. Can I see that one? Yeah. Ooh, these are nice. Yeah. Would you like that pattern? Uh, I'm not sure it would fit me. I'm kind of small. <laughs> well, if you get your words done, then you can take another look. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, here's <clears throat> another one with the uh, roughly front. This one's more of a cardigan style. Um, so you can do the tie front. Looks like a hook and eye closure. Or uh, that's probably buttons. But cute. Uh, another 2003. No, 2004. There are older ones in here, I promise. It's a good basic chemise. You can do your long chemise, short chemise, closed sleeve, open sleeve, and this one is 2003. This is a nice basic cover, I guess. Um, looks a little bit mommy, but 2004. I could see an elf wearing it. And you also have the pattern for the uh, basic pants or a skirt, and a sort of camisole top. So it's a good staple pattern to have. More costumes. This one's for a bodice. Again, you can have the detachable sleeves or detachable cuffs, which is really cool. Uh, or the giant flowy fluted sleeves, uh, tie closed sleeve, no sleeves, um, puffy sleeve. So good one if you're getting into making historical looking costuming. Um, you can always use this as a basis and then do research about what it would actually look like and make adjustments accordingly. Another good uh, men's shirt, 
This one has the yoke collar, um, some variations for the sleeve cuffs again, variations for sizing. I don't, yeah, you don't have the belt pattern in here, but you do have a pattern for the sash in case you need to learn how to cut a very long rectangle. Oh no, so hard, so difficult. For some people. This yeah. one was 2005, so a little bit more advanced. <gasps> Here's the exact same pattern again. Oh, and this one is uh, 4862. So you have, these are both size E. I don't know. Maybe she and I have the same ones again. Uh, here's your pirate slash vampire slash um, dandy gent uh, from 2004. So you, this one does have the waistcoat pattern as well as the frock coat, and I think the cummerbund? No, that's something else. Oh, the neck ruffle. Very important. Oh, that same bodice pattern again. You've got quite a few duplicates in McCall's. Next, we have a vest pattern, so long, short, closures, pockets, uh, different bottom edges. This is number 2260 from 1999. Now we're back to older style. This one has one of the look circle. This is 2667. And what did she write here? Detachable. What? on white oh okay the sort of ruffle bib is detachable um this is cut to miss size 14. you need less than three and one eighths yards for the blouse and uh, this one was from 1970. i love finding those notes on the patterns it's like finding notes in somebody's cookbook This one is also from 1970-2386. Cute little dresses, smocked waists. Um, that green one is really cute. This one is easy and has the tie front crop tops or the long vest. Um, this has to be 60s or 70s. 1971 has my mom's name on the back and yeah very her biker style my parents were bikers back in the day we have a children's pattern 2050 um has a clown decal for some reason cute little back pocket this one was from 1956. We found an oldie. Though you can usually, again, tell by the art style, but still cute and fun. Here's another costumey one. Uh, more like vampire damsel sort of a look from 2000. Very... I'm seeing a lot of Charmed, Merlin, those sort of series. A good little shirt pattern. Uh, you can do the high neck or button up, V neck, looks like a bow on the back. Mrs. Set of Blouses 3550 from 1973. And there you can tell by the hairstyles. That, that is the 70s right there. This is, again, going to that Dior new look kind of shape. And do you tell me your date? 1956. Um, so your very poof skirt, very fitted top. Uh, obviously some sort of girdle or coarse tree underneath. Oh, I found all of the 70s. So, um, this one 
is like share everyday work from 19 share everyday wear from 1973 your halter top vest um wide leg pants cute little stripey thing classic 70s 3570 Again, here we have the halter neck. Uh, it's like more of a wrap dress style this time. 3206, this one is from 1972. And the note here says emerald green. Oh, that would be really pretty in an emerald green. Uh, and this again was my mom's. She's got her name on the back. Good basic dress looks like elastic neckline and cuffs and then nice poofy sleeve 1973 no fun notes on this one just labeled mrs. dress one dollar this one has a really interesting neckline how it comes down to a point like that and then you got your center front seam this is a make it easy please from the calls 3193 from 1972. Ooh. That's sort of an apron dress with pockets. Um, or see, I don't understand how you can have these two looks, which are very similar, obviously, would use the same pieces, and then this third look, which is that's basically a whole nother pattern. I mean, I wouldn't complain about two-for-one patterns. It's just a little odd to put them together. Uh, this is 1973. It's still cute, though. I like that center one. A little bit of that mod look. Oh. Here is your throwback to the uh, medieval look. Uh, 1973 again. But you've got that sort of tunic-style top. Um, I love this button detail that's almost more 40s. Um, and then your tie front top with your sailor collar, cute little beach suit. Very much, let's get on a boat. Ooh, this one has a red mark through it for some reason. I don't know if that was maybe that it was um, part of a sail or what was going on there, but it's 3938. This one, I can tell by the price, it's more recent. It's 1450. And it's from 2003. But again, a lot of different styles of vest, uh, different cuts for the bottom edges, different closures, lots of things to play with. Some very cute dresses. That one says 60s all over it, but this is 1972, so early 70s. Still that fabric, though. Can we just admire that for a moment? I'm gonna interrupt you to admire this fabric. Ooh, that is a lot of detail. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've got your flutter sleeves, your sort of sailor look, whatever this is. Um, Lots of 70s. Hmm. Here's the um, appropriation of Chinese culture. It's 2002 with your classic, I think it's called a Changsam uh, shirt button closure. That Mandarin collar. And of course they used brocade silks to display the pattern. Keep writing. Sorry. This one is a bridal pattern from 2000. This I know was Angelina's. Um, she didn't wind up using it, I don't think, because she didn't contact me to get it back. Or she had a different one that she used instead and wanted uh, more. So 3053, Empire Waist. Um, not, not really Regency though, Pre-Regency, like, like early 
early late 1600s I think was when they had the high waist but then I don't know I am not a style historian it's a cute little housework outfit got your hair wrap um, I guess that one would be more for the beach and then the maxi length too this is from 1975 and then there's math on the back to see how much fabric she needs um, she has three and three quarters plus two and two quarters as uh, five and seven quarters so six and three quarters so seven yards at 350 a yard because it's important to know how much you're going to spend on your garments. Another cute little butter sleeve, maxi dress, short dress, shirt and pants, 1974. Uh, that's uh, number 4003. I haven't been giving numbers for all of these. It's okay. Here's a tiered dress, more modern. Um, Looks like you can choose different numbers of tiers to put on, so you can have a shorter dress, longer dress, shirt, from 2003. Sort of comfy pajama-esque set. Uh, camisoles or full-on shift, pants, skirts, pajama tops from 2004. The skirt has an interesting cut to it, so it comes down to a point in the front and then flares out all over from there. Not sure how that would work on my body. Uh, 4307 from 2003. This one is kind of the opposite of that. Instead of pointing down, the yoke for the skirt comes up and then flares. And you can do that in a handkerchief style too, it looks like. 4661 from 2004. This one's a little bit more fit and flare skirt. Um, bias cut, it looks like. So That'll give a little bit more stretch and let it hang and drape uh, as opposed to flowing out from the body. This is from 2003. This one is a set of various, there goes the next pile, um, cute tops. So tank tops, long sleeves, t-shirts, layered looks, 2005. Uh, this is pattern 4872. My leg is falling asleep little blazer. Uh, it's hard to see in the pictures. Looks like there's a skirt suit or a pant suit or yeah, looks like that might be it. And then the vest um, doesn't have the pictures on the back to show what all the looks consist of, uh, but this is from 2003, number 4215. Oh, I was going to say we might actually get out of old stuff, but the next one is an old one. Uh, this is another 2003, number 4229. This one is good for coat. She does, in fact, have kittens printed around the bottom of her coat fabric. Um, yeah, long coat, good winter basics. This one looks like it was a size 10. 1976. Um, this might have actually, no, Mrs. Dress or Top. I was gonna say it might have actually been maternity wear, but because um, you can see it's sort of gathered right at the waist there, so it would give more room, but I think that was just the look at the time. And like a variety of tops. Uh, 1975. Just good basic button downs. Ooh. 
Here is an adorable little holiday dress. Easy rule. New exclusive feature in this pattern for easier, quicker, more accurate fit. This one is from 1957. And I love it. This is another one that makes me wish I had a little girl to dress up. Corset pattern. MS 4861 2005. This is corsets. Um, looks like these are almost meant to be stays, like the 1970s stays, or not 1970s, 1700 stays. Um, but they have the side closures. This one's a cincher. These should all be boning channels. So if it's boned to that extent, you're looking at stays or bodies, not at corsets. But this was. 2005, the early days of the corset craze, I guess. Here is a very cute skirt pattern. Looks like these could be used for Victorian or almost Renaissance, uh, depending on your needs. This is from 2003, number 4090. Uh, this one is all the way Victorian-esque, 2003. See, she's got her little riding coat, um, your ruffle front blouse, and then all of your gather bunting style skirt hem, which was kind of a thing. Um, Bernadette Banner would know better than me if this was accurate or not. And we have a vampire cloak. Uh, this is 4130. Let's see if I can still see the... No, I gotta open it up to see the year. 2003. Uh, it's just the cloak. And then looks like you do have the Dracula collar example. Um, so that is also something in there. And... If you ever need to learn how to make that kind of stand-up collar, you've got a pattern for it. Or I've got a pattern for it. And the last one in the box is that cloak pattern again, so that's kind of a disappointment. Uh, but those are all of my McCall's patterns. And Asher, how many words you got left? 3,000. All right, so we're going to be here for a while. Um, as usual, like, subscribe, comment. I'm going to find something else to be productive with while Asher finishes up and we'll probably think about dinner at some point soon. So hopefully you have made something while you were watching this and listening to this. Um, I did this with McCall's because the simplicity one seemed to be popular. I do still have Butterick and other um, random uh, companies I can go through to for next time. So I will see you this time next week.